magic and all the crap I learned in high school. Makes you think all the world's a sunny day. Oh yeah, I got a night. Everything looks worse in black and white. Go to go. Hello there, and welcome to my channel. My name is Doug, and I'm back with another fountain pen review and a giveaway. This is the penultimate, pardon the pun. Fully Win Fountain Pen of the Five, generously donated by Joel Terrell. This is the Fully Win Orange. No model numbers, just orange. And it is very orange. I'll show you the unboxing I did more than a month ago when I received all of these pens from Joel. Then we'll take a good look at it close up. Knock, knock. Who's there? Fully Win. Fully Win who? Knock, knock. Who's there? Fully Win. Fully Win who? Knock, knock. Who's there? Orange. Orange who? Orange, you glad I didn't say fully win? And if you hated that joke, you're going to hate the rest of this video, so switch away right now. Otherwise, let's dive into this orange beauty and show you how to win this pen right now. Wow, look at this. Oh my goodness, and they're all marked. Fully Win Orange from Bobby Pens. So that unboxing was back in March when it was cold outside. Here it is May, and it's called outside. Actually, I think the date is March 97th right now. Feels like it anyway. But since we're stuck inside, let's take a good look at this orange pen by Fully Wen. Ooh, I rhymed. That's okay, I won't charge you extra for the rhyme. What I want to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, give some measurements, and then do a writing sample. After the writing sample, I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like about this pen and give you details on how to enter the giveaway contest. So let's take a closer look at this pen. I've been writing with it over the weekend and I have to say my first impressions when I took it out of the box were not correct. I didn't think this pen would appeal to me mostly because of its size, but also because of its styling. However, after writing with this pen, it has impressed me on a few levels, but I'll get to that in a moment. Looking at the pen overall, we see the same kind of shape design approach as with the 2037 from last week. Here's the 2037. It has the same kind of concave shape on the cap and convex shape on the barrel, but that's where the similarity ends. From the top, we see a domed chrome finial and a uniquely styled chrome clip with Fully Wen stamped on the top. This design looks like it might serve some kind of purpose as a spring or something, uh, but it is almost useless as it's almost unmovable. Very, very stiff. The shiny chrome cap is straight until about here, where it flares up quite dramatically to meet the barrel flush, which gives the cap kind of a funnel type shape. I have to do a small insert here as I have been writing with this pen for a while and editing this video. And I just noticed that it actually is branded Fully Wen here on the back of the cap. It's so shiny that it's really hard to see in certain lights. As you see, it disappears. But it, does look, it looks like a, a silkscreen kind of black paint on the back of the chrome. There you go. The barrel is made from exactly the same material 
as we saw in the Fully Win 826, which was the subject of a giveaway a couple of weeks ago. And if you're watching right now, Robert Reed, hello, you won the 826, but only if you contact me by midnight tonight. Otherwise, I spin the wheel again and we'll find another winner. The barrel tapers up to about this point, where it tapers down quite dramatically to a rounded point. The cap snaps off rather easily to reveal a small concave section made of the same material as the barrel, which is very good. The section tapers quite dramatically down to a small double ring uh, collar here, which is part of the snapping, the cap snapping mechanism, I believe, and a very small Fully Wen branded nib, which has Fully Wen printed, the Fully Wen logo, and some scroll work. And here's a look at the non finned plastic feed. Very interesting. The cap posts, but you have to give it kind of a twist and a push to make it stay secure. When posted, the pen is still nib weighted, which is good. So it doesn't back weight the pen at all. And it's actually very comfortable in the hand, either posted or unposted. It's plenty long enough to sit in the hand unposted. The section is a bit small and narrow for my hand. Too small and dry. Oh, I wouldn't say that. And this step up here to the barrel is actually quite sharp. I found a way to alter my grip when writing with this pen to make this work for me, but I'll discuss that in the writing sample. The barrel unscrews with metal threads on metal threads, which is good, to reveal a Fully Wen branded standard international cartridge converter, which has a metal reinforcement on the nipple, and that's good. So we're looking at a uh, not your cheapy kind of converter. It's actually an, kind of an upgraded converter. The pen will take standard international short cartridges, but will not piggyback as the barrel's too narrow to accept a second standard short uh, cartridge on board. This pen is available on Bobby's Etsy store for $12.50 US. It is actually the first featured item on his storefront. Now let's see this pen in comparison to some others. Okay, so here is the Fully Wen Orange next to a Fully Wen 2037, a Pilot Metropolitan, a Parker Sonnet, and a Bauer 051 which is identical in size and shape to a Monteverdi Impreza. Now let's look at them posted. Okay, here we are with the pens posted. You can see that they're all roughly number five size nibs, with the Fully Wen Orange being decidedly the smaller of the group. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. <laughs> back with the writing sample portion of the review. This paper is Clairefontaine 90 GSM. I should say actually I've, I've grown very fond of this Clairefontaine paper. I have a couple of these spiral bound Clairefontaine notebooks uh, that I've been doing my writing samples and so forth for my videos in and I've grown so fond of it that I've actually switched out my my writing journal from a Rhodia uh, web notebook to this Clairefontaine notebook that has uh, the elastic enclosure and a bookmark ribbon and the paper is the same 90 GSM Clairefontaine but it's a cream color which is very pleasant and uh, is lined and the pages the pages are numbered there's a little 
flap at the back. They're called My Essential Claire Fontaine. And they're uh, less expensive than the uh, Rhodia Web Notebook, or Webby as they're called. So I've ordered a couple of more of those uh, Claire Fontaine uh, My Essential from a Canadian online retailer called nightwriting.ca. And they're uh, relatively inexpensive, and I really like the paper. But on with the writing sample. This is the Fully Win. Orange. There's no model number here. It's just orange. If I wanted to see a man eat an orange, I would have taken the orange eating class. The eating of an orange is a lot like a good marriage. Just eat it, oranges. And this is a fine steel nib. And the ink today is diamine. Ancient copper. Let's check the wetness. It's not overly wet, but for a fine nib, it's not too bad. As you can see. And line variation, there won't be much here. That's no pressure at all. That's pushing it. It doesn't flex at all. The nib moves off the feed and you get a little bit more juice out of it, but no line variation at all. Yeah, very, very little. Let's listen to it right. It's actually very, very, very smooth. And for some reverse writing, it uh, sticks a little bit on the upstrokes, but uh, again, it actually writes, which is good. And some quick writing. Yeah, that feed keeps up very, very nicely. No problems, no skipping. So there you have it. The Fully Wen Orange. Now, what do I like and what do I not like so much about this pen? Well, to start with, I have to say that I expected not to like this pen at all. The small section and the tiny nib immediately made me think that I wouldn't like this pen as a writer. And for me, I'm fonder of bigger nibs and girthier sections than this. But in all honesty, writing with this pen for a couple of days really made me appreciate it. Not ultimately for me, but perhaps for people with smaller hands who enjoy pen grips that bring them closer to the page. Everyone's different. Our grips, our tastes and design, and our handwriting styles, they're all different. The nib on this pen is ultra smooth and glassy. It is decently wet, and once I found a grip that made the pen comfortable in my hand, I enjoyed the writing experience. And not just that I tolerated it for purpose of the review, mind you, but I really enjoyed it. I'll show you the grip. Now, normally I would grip a pen like this, right, in the classic kind of grip. But with that sharp step and being so narrow for me and so close to the page, I decided to move my thumb up above that step 
and I moved my index finger down closer to the nib, which sort of spread out my grip. And once I did that, it actually feels very nice and very well balanced in the hand. And it's not an overly heavy pen either. But uh, with that cap uh, posted like that, it makes it a, a very nicely balanced pen when I move my thumb back. You have to be open to changing your grip, however, with this pen, for me anyway. Uh, perhaps you like writing closer to the page down like that. Some people grip their pens like this. Some people have an overgrip. Some people grip their pens like this. Some people grip their pens like that, you know. So you could write with a nail, I guess, if you wanted to. But uh, again, the point is we're all different. And I found a grip that actually made this pen feel fairly comfortable. So we learn something new every day, don't we? Especially if we challenge our expectations with an open mind. We now return control of your television set to you until next week at the same time when the control voice will again take over. Until then, please stand by. So what do I not like about this pen? Well, there are a few things here. Overall, I'm not partial to the design aesthetic of this pen. I'm a bit OCD when it comes to design. As a theater designer, uh, with over 30 years of experience in theater, scenery design, lighting design, and so forth, balance, proportion, and juxtaposition of materials, textures, and colors is just part of my DNA. If I see something with an odd balance or a clash of materials or color, like stripes with checks or, or a poorly balanced photograph, it just pains me in my gut. That's how I felt about this pen when I first saw it. Let's look at it from a design standpoint for a moment. The pen is unbalanced. I'm going to turn over a page so we can see this. The pen is unbalanced in size and shape and mixture of materials. The top is too thin, the bottom is too fat. The shiny mirrored chrome clashes with the warm marmalade color and texture of the barrel. Posted, it is even worse with a cacophony of curves, styles, shapes, and materials. Yuck. Hey Mel, can I get you something? Cup of coffee? Donut? Toupee? <laughs> Yuck. All right, I'll get you something to settle your stomach. This pen reminds me of Charlie Chaplin. Many of you won't know who that is, but I urge you to find out. Chaplin is one of the giants of cinema and a genius of comedy. One aspect of Chaplin's screen character, The Tramp, reminds me of this pen. The Tramp's overall design and look was carefully constructed by Chaplin to be a representation of the everyman. If you look at the Tramp from top to bottom, you'll see he spans the class system from his high-class bowler to his low-class baggy pants and street person's worn-out huge shoes. His shape goes from tight, narrow, and thin at the top to fat and bulky top to bottom. The Tramp's costume is a mixture of styles, materials, and shapes that is odd and mismatched. On purpose, of course, and it works for Chaplin's purposes. This pen doesn't work because it's all over the map. That's just my two cents and the end of the film lecture for today. I also don't like the small nib size and the fingerprint magnet chrome cap. I'm always rubbing the fingerprints off of this. And the clip here is just about worthless, although it's the most stylish thing on the pen, actually, which puts it out of place as well. So, how can you win this pen? If you still want it, that is. Well, just leave a comment below and you'll be entered into the draw. You can leave any kind of comment. You don't have to answer the skill testing question if you don't want to. However, if you want to play, please feel free to see if you can identify the cutaways I've inserted into this video. You have until a week today, May 13th at midnight Pacific Standard Time, to add a comment. At that time, I will randomly select a winner and announce it in a pinned comment here on the Community tab of my YouTube homepage. Please remember there's no way for me to contact you. I'm not a psychic who can decipher the email address or the identity of Little Miss Tuffet 321. I must confess, I'm a bit psychic. 
You must check back here and see if you've won, and then contact me by mail at djrathbun at gmail.com with your address within a week of the draw so I can send you your prize. If you don't contact me in that time, I'll just spin again and we'll choose another winner. So, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell to get an instant notification whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.